Hello, everybody, and welcome to Linux Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about forensics basics. So we'll start with what is forensics anyway? So forensic is a noun that means belonging to, used in, or suitable to courts, etc. So a lot of times people look at forensics and they say forensics is something that has to be in a court situation. But I like to look at the part of the definition that says suitable to courts. In other words, our goal is to gather evidence that's of sufficient quality that it could be used in court even if it is not intended to be used in court. And we'll talk about that along the way. One thing that is very important is you should never be careless as you gather evidence because you assume it's not going to show up in court because you never really know. You might start investigating an incident and the next thing you know, it's a real incident and there's been a breach and people are going to try to figure out who did it. So forensic science or just forensics is the scientific collection of quality evidence. Now, the world of forensics is pretty large. There are a lot of different kinds of forensics that you can do. I like to break it into physical forensics, you know, the typical stuff that you see on shows like CSI, where, you know, they talk about things like transfer. That's one general principle in forensics that whenever two bodies interact, there's some sort of transfer between them. So things like uh, paint that gets rubbed off when you run over somebody in the highway, uh, fingerprints are another common piece of physical evidence that's collected and everyone's favorite DNA. We also have digital evidence, network forensics. We'll talk about that in this course. We'll look at data storage, investigating things that are stored on various media. Well, we can also look at small devices things like your phones and tablets, etc., which store information. Incidentally, some of those small devices are running Linux, so some of the things that we talk about in this class might be relevant. And then we have computers. So what are some general principles when it comes to doing forensics? One of the biggest things you have to be careful about is to maintain the integrity of the evidence. Don't destroy the evidence. Uh, I read a book recently, and I won't name the book, but in the book there was a program for gathering some information from files such as when they were last accessed, and the program actually opened the files before gathering that information, destroying all the evidence. The other thing is that once you've collected evidence, you have to maintain what we call the chain of custody. So you have to make sure that that evidence doesn't become corrupted. You know, if it's physical evidence, typically it goes in a bag with a label, and on the label is every person that took it out of the bag. Another principle, document everything. Now, I know that we're technical people here and we like to use technology to document everything. Sometimes handwritten is better. You know, if you want to handwrite something in a bound notebook with numbered pages, that's the best. No one can come back later and claim that you suddenly inserted a page or removed a page from your notes. Also, if it's possible, 
try to work with a partner. That way one person can document while the other person gathers evidence. Also, it's harder to challenge what two people say. You know, if one person is alone, you might get accusations like, you know, he planted that glove in the alleyway, for example. And always follow standard practices. If you follow standard practices, that doesn't require a lot of explanation in court if you end up there. You know, if you did your own thing, then that might get questioned. So there are different phases of an investigation. And the first phase is to preserve the evidence. In the medical field, they have this concept, first do no harm. So it's very similar. Don't walk all over the evidence. Then search for evidence. Now this has become more lengthy and time consuming because storage media has exploded in size. You know, we have three terabyte drives on desktop computers and they have lots of RAM and we have thumb drives with huge capacities, etc. And then once we've gathered the evidence, and evidence is just information, we have data, which is just bits and bytes, and then we have information, which is that data with meaning, and then we have evidence. Evidence is information that supports or refutes some sort of hypothesis. You know, for example, I might think that Bob has embezzled funds from his company. So I'm looking for things that would either refute or support that. And I reconstruct the events. We'll talk a lot about that in this course. So incident response. First thing you want to do is validate that there was an incident and then you proceed with preservation, searching, and event reconstruction. Now you might need to do some preliminary investigation to determine if there was an incident. And it's never done till all the paperwork is done. So until you've done all the reports, your work is not over. So here's a high level view of the process. So someone calls you. So we got a call and they say, I think there was an incident. So you come, you do some preliminary investigation and Oh, wasn't an incident. Well, you can take away from that some lessons learned. You can say, why did they think it was an incident? And you can file that away for future use. Or it was an incident. Now you can do some live analysis where you're working on the system that's still up in order to gather information. After you've gathered a little bit of information and probably processed that to some extent, you're going to ask yourself, is this a case where I need to perform dead analysis? And if the answer is no, well, then you write your reports and talk about lessons learned. If the answer is yes, you acquire images and then you perform your dead analysis and of course, write the reports and talk about lessons learned. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, make sure you tell a friend. I'll see you soon.